today on the Gearhead Gardener, I'm going to show you a different way of propagation. You've heard of fig pops. This is the way I'm going to do it. Stay tuned. Okay, today is the first day of winter 2022, and I was just getting ready to pack everything up and close everything off and let everything just go to sleep for a little while. And I thought, I have another set of projects that I wanted to do. This is my rendition of the fig pop. So if there's something you're interested in, let's get started. Here's a conventional way of making fig pops. I mean, real simple. Skinny little baggie. These happen to be food saver bags that I cut down and sealed. Label it. Okay, I've got my cuttings. I'm just gonna set that inside. Right. And then I'm gonna put a little water in it, either through the bottle or with the squirt bottle, squirt a bunch of water and start it off damp. And I'm gonna put just like one or two holes at the bottom. Right, so that's just your regular, your regular fig pop. And it'll root like that. Okay, then I simply stuff two of these in a cup with no holes in it so they could drain out as they need it. And I could set them aside. Okay, first off, I want you guys to see these plastic containers that I found in the in the produce section at my local market. These would have spices in it, like mint or sage or oregano, growing live with a little root ball. So I thought it'd be a great idea to do this with fig trees and make my own little fig pops. All right, so here's what I'm doing. I've taken my punch, put a hole in it as a vent up at the top. I filled it full of perlite vermiculite 50-50 mix. And I put it up as high as I could on these because I've noticed it's gonna be better. And that's gonna be my vent air hole. Okay. And now these have been sitting in here for a little over a month. And here we've got some branch going on. I haven't seen any roots, but I haven't also taken this apart. Okay, and you can see what I've also been doing now. I figured out the smart thing is a staple right here. This way I can open up the top if I need to add any moisture or take any moisture away. So I've got a couple of these. This one's marked where the location of where I picked it up is. And these have just gone in there and I haven't had a chance to mark these up, up yet. But these are cuttings from my neighbor's house, and these have been in a paper towel for the first month. This is a violet Bordeaux that was in soil, and I've just moved this. And here's another one that's wrapped in a paper towel for about a month in a plastic bag. So this is where I'm going to start on the first day of winter. Okay, so what I've done now that I've got the box prepped, See if I can open this up one-handed. Okay, and now that I've got the box prepped, I mean, I did the other ones a little differently because I got it, the soil wet already. So I've gone through my bag of cuttings and I found this is a, a white Kadota that's got three low nodes, pretty low. So I've made a couple of scars in it and that's actually gonna sit inside here. I mean, it's better when the the substrate's already wet. And then I'll be able to close this off like so. And just put a staple in it so I don't have to worry about it opening up. And now I can level out my substrate. I'll set this in a little pot of water for it to start collecting. And then I found this box that I could keep like five of them in. Keep a little water in there, keep some moisture. I could always take this out and set it in the sun because here in California, it's first day of winter and it's 83 degrees at 12.30 in the afternoon. Okay, so I got one more to do, but I could only fit five into these containers like this. I don't think I could fit a sixth one, but I will try. Oh 
you know, I'll be able to pull it off. Okay, and those could sit on a shelf where they're gonna get some sunlight. I can move them out to the bright sun like I wanted to. I could put them under the grow light and then just keep an eye on them. That's it for this one. Just a very short little video on these. All right, all six boxes are gonna fit in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick one more and then get these all labeled. I went through my collection to look for the very last one and I found this Brooklyn White. And as you can see, I got two sets of nodes that could be below soil line, maybe even three when you look at this node as well, that could be below the soil line. So this time I've set it into place and I'm just gonna fill it this way. Then I'm going to give it a little shot. And staple it closed. And there we have it. All right, it's labeled Brooklyn White. As you can see, I got three nodes under the soil line. And I'm just gonna wedge this guy in here. How did I have that? Okay, like I said, I'm gonna wedge it. So I have all six of these in here. And see, the beauty is that I can come in here now, not one-handed, but I can come in with my squirt bottle and add water to these as I need. I could even go right into the vent hole if I want to, and add a little bit of water into each one of these. All right, so we're gonna put these six aside. Okay, here we go. And this box is gonna sit here conveniently on this little shelf where it's gonna get some nice morning sunshine. And I think it's gonna do pretty good here. Okay, so this is part one. We'll come back to this and, you know, as soon as we see some signs of growth on the other ones, I'll keep a close eye on this and we'll get back to you. That's it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Come along with me on this adventure as I play with my trees and work on old cars and do pretty much anything else I want in my retirement. Thank you for watching. Gearhead Gardener here on Filet TV. Ciao.